Welcome to a massive edition of AEW Dark. I'm Excalibur, joined as always by the human suplex machine, Taz. And Taz, we have a very special main event here tonight. Absolutely, the FTW World Heavyweight Championship will be defended tonight in this episode by the machine Brian Cage against Brandon Cutler, who's been looking pretty good as of late. Brandon Cutler, when he gets hot, he gets rolling. Will he be able to dethrone the machine? We will find out later tonight. So let's not delay any further and throw it down to Justin Roberts inside the ring. The following is a tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a combined weight of 430 pounds, Luther Serpentico Chaos Project. Taz, Chaos Project has uh, stumbled a little bit as of late, but last week on Dark picked up an important victory, and I think they're hoping they can string together some momentum here tonight. Do you think Luther realizes there was any sort of stumbling at all? Probably not. No. Serpentico just... Serpentico definitely did because he seems to be the most aware of everything. Why do you think that? He uh, because allows his opponent to do some a batting ram for months. Well, I don't know that he allows it. I think Luther's just so powerful that he throws his partner around. You should counter it. That'd be hysterical. Counter your partner. Have you ever talked to Sir Pentagon? Yeah. Exactly. Join the no. order. You guys live in the same complex? The Gator Master? Yeah. yeah the Gator. Alongside uh, Super Strong Suplex Machine. Super Strong Suplex Machine is over. And their opponents, at a combined weight of 374 pounds, Alex Reynolds and Sean Silver, the Meat Man. Dark biceps. Dark Order representative Silver and Reynolds. They have been impressive, undefeated this year, standing at three and zero. Oh. They will face those two. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey. Serpentico. Oh, Serpentico's a gimmick stealer. He stole my arm cross thing. Now he's stealing the dark water. So I hope the dark water kicks his ass for that. How about that? See now? So, you know, Serpentico, his mask is red. Yes. Is. Orange is actually a combination of red and yellow. So theoretically, he is kind of stealing from you, the red. Yeah, I never thought of it like that. It's actually a valid point. Oh, Silver rips his arms off. Not a stretch at all. Great mat return there. Rip his arms off. Waist lock. Silver hanging in tight there. Standing switch action. Breaks the grip of the Silver. Eats a forearm. Silver hits the rope. Or Sir Pendigo hits the rope. Sir Silver elevates him over the top. Big, thick biceps, triceps, deltoids. That's the shoulder Excalibur. Looking big right now. Big! Deltoid the funky homo sapien, one of my favorite hip hop artists. Oh, that's gonna get over huge on the YouTube comments. They love you, brother. Oh. Oh! oh, Nelly. Big uppercut hitting Serpentico in the midsection. A single bicep shot right there. I mean, my bodybuilding days back in the day in the 80s. Hold on, watch out. Double drop toe holds. Oh, look at that. Double drop kicks. Mason Drop is just rocking the head of Sir Pentico. And Luther realizes he needs to try to get into this match. Sir Pentico flips over the top, escapes out the back door. Luther makes the blind tag. Shoot, right hand blocked by Reynolds. Who's swinging a miss there by Luther. Luther's his arms, he's got some long arms. Like yeah, those, trunks. those are some heavy shots, man. If those had connected, I think it might have been the end of the night for Reynolds. Oh, yeah, you might be right about that. For Reynolds. Nice speed, nice athleticism. Nice kip up, too, by Alex Reynolds. Watch out. And don't forget, tomorrow night on Dynamite, John Silver, representing Dark Order, will challenge Darby Allen for the TNT Championship, trying to bring the title back into the fold. Oh, God, I'll be rooting for John Silver. I guarantee it. All of us at Team Taz will root for him, except maybe Cage. What a beat down right here by the big Luther. Darby Allen did say that the greatest TNT champion of all time was Mr. Brody Lee. And so, you know, showing great respect to Brody, to the, to the lineage of the championship. 
So I, I do respect that, obviously. But watch out now, Luther again using Serpentico as a weapon on Reynolds. Luther, oh, just a knee strike to the face of Reynolds. Serpentico happens to, to fall on his opponent. Inadvertent cover, very nearly picked up the victory here. I think Serpentico tries to get out of being in Chaos Project. Oh, I'm sure he does. You say it like on a, like he tries to get out every day. I, I think this it's is like a, a mob. You this is a out. hostage situation. <laughs> Luther sending Reynolds into the corner. Kind of like me working with you over here. <laughs> Free to go at any time, Taz. <laughs> yeah. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Big clothesline from Luther. Serpentico very slow. Pentico can't even get to a base. Good, good combination, good communication. Oh! He just goes, huh, huh, huh. The pantomime. And he <laughs> Cover here, one, two. <laughs> he did pantomime and just pointed back when, huh, 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 huh. See, working with me, not so bad. Would you rather work with me or Luther? Uh, you, I guess. <laughs> a ringing endorsement. Well, Luther doesn't have an S on his chest like you. Nice, Taz. Good job. But that was a nice boot, but yeah, just shut you down, brother. It's all right. You can talk. His mic's not dead, folks. He just got shut down. That's what happens. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Alex Reynolds in grave danger here, maybe. Sorry, Taz. I got to check it out. It's really urgent. I can save 20% of my car insurance. <laughs> Alex Reynolds headed up to the top. Moon so oh. pressed, takes down Luther. Reynolds makes the tag out to John Silver. Silver like he was shot out of a cannon. Very quick how he got back in the ring there, how fast he did that. It was nice by Silver. Big Beal coming here, folks. The Bradleyest of Beals there for John Silver. Another one. Oh, man. Talk about getting shot out of a cannon. Wow, German suplex. Silver, with the low trajectory on it, still was able to send Luther. Oh! Ooh. German suplex. Two, no. Right hands to the midsection of the face. Serpentico, though, launches the boot. Oh, look at this. Got nailed. Silver got nailed. Chaos Project. With a chance here, Taz. Hey, you're not kidding. Oh! Creepy! Yeah! <laughs> well, he's called his shot, Taz. I love it. Silver <laughs> being brought up. Serpentico. Oh. Uh-oh. I think Luth, if he wasn't a pro wrestler, he would be like one of those roller, thir roller derby king guys, like in a roller derby. Take a, yeah. Yeah, I know it's a, a tope suicida Reynolds crashing out on the floor. You know, roll dirty guys. They, I do know they throw it Back in the uh, 70s. And Luther with the stupid ball on his head to quote negative one, <laughs> driven down to the floor by Alex Reynolds. Nice. Middle Strong kicks there. Kicks, yeah. Silver. Ooh. Intercepted. Backslide. Oh. Oh. Man. Oh. Serpentico counters with the jumping Enzi Gary. Whoa. I was channeling the late great Bruce Lee right there. John Silver. You can see his eyes are lit up the intensity. He's got Serpentico. Against the ropes. Oh. The boot to the back of the head, the drop kick from Reynolds, the release German suplex. The tag out. And John Silver and Alex Reynolds yeah, have Serpentico Serpento. hooked up. The Dark Destroyer. Cover two, three. The winners of this match John Silver and Alex. Whoa, Reynolds! Man, negative one. He's elevated. He graduated to the top rope with a little springboard action.
John Silver. This is nice. Alex nice Reynolds stuff. looking impressive here. And Taz Silver headed into Dynamite tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT. And the TNT Championship match with Darby Allen. Yeah, he, he, there's nice momentum for John Silver. And he is just cooking on all cylinders, too. So, well, Darby Allen might be in uh, <laughs> a heap of trouble. He might be crowning a new. TNT champion, I damn sure hope so. And the TNT championship may return to the Dark Order tomorrow night. Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian, SCU is ranked number one in AEW's tag team division. However, all the talk is about Pac and Ray Phoenix getting an upcoming tag team title shot against the Young Bucks. Your thoughts on this? My thoughts are who cares? You talk about buzz, I don't care about buzz. This isn't what it's about. Buzz is not important. I could sit and yell and complain until I get a title shot, but complaints are also not important. This is AEW and they say wins and losses matter. The rankings matter. And the fact is that SCU is the number one ranked team. So yes, Pac, Phoenix, they won the Casino Battle Royal. They have every right to a title shot and they can make all the noise and get all the hubbub around them. Meanwhile, Frankie Kazarian, Christopher Daniels, we said the next time we lose, we split up, and each and every time we go out there, that stipulation is on the line. So we're quietly winning match after match after match. And while all the noise is about Pac and Phoenix, Frankie and I will continue to win, whether it's on AEW Dark, Elevation, Escalation, Motivation, Sweet Sensation. I don't care what the name of the show is. We're just going to keep winning until sooner or later. The World Tag Team Champions will be standing in the ring and they will be facing Frankie Kazarian and Christopher Daniels. And then I will remind you why you never should have forgotten about us in the first place. Let me explain something, Alex. Christopher Daniels has been my best friend for 20 years. We've been a tag team for 10 years and we're willing, willing to put that all on the line to become AEW Tag Team Champions. So when that day comes, how hard do you think we'll fight? How deep do you think we'll claw? How much do you think I'm willing to sacrifice to protect what I've spent an entire career building? I'll give you that answer, everything. I will do anything, I will sacrifice everything, and we will become AEW World Tag Team Champions. The number one ranked red hot SCU, Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian in action next here on AEW Dark. This is a tag team contest set for one fall. A 20 minute time limit approaching the ring from Southern California. At a combined weight of 425 pounds, the fallen angel Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian, SCU. Taz, SCU, as I said, has been red hot, pun completely intended. They have been on a tremendous roll and captured the number one rank in the tag team division. And their opponents had a combined weight of 435 pounds, a team of Jarrell Nelson and Royce Isaacs. Yeah, since uh, to your point, Excalibur, since SCU has put that pressure on themselves, as we talk about a, a lot here, basically every week we, we laid it out for, the, for, the, for, our, for our fan base here, that, you know, if they lose, if SCU loses, they're done. They're done teaming up, uh, you know, as a unit and stuff like that. So, uh, and Tez, as we've seen, they've, we've laid it out every week, and every week SCU seems to keep on winning. Well, we lay it out every week because you never know, there could be one or two or maybe 10,000 new viewers on the YouTubes over here. So, you know, you got to smarten those uh, jabronis up, too, and I mean that in a loving way. Oh, there are multiple tubes. I thought it was just one. There's many tubes, lots of tubes. Well, I mean, the other reason we have to lay it out every week is because you, you never know what happens. I mean, it could be that that SCU gets caught sleeping. It could be that a, right, yeah. a team like Isaacs and Nelson really come out and, and make a name for themselves sure. in the ending the, the the team, the career team of uh, SCU. That would be heavy. Just imagine some team. I, I mean, you would assume at some point it's going to happen. SCU is going to end up losing. I would, I would think that. I hope they don't. They're friends of mine. I hope they don't. Everybody loses eventually. Well, yes. Most people do. Except for Tess. <laughs> well, through the 90s, yeah, that's a fact. But anyway, uh, yeah, right now, 
Right now, if you're Kazarian, you want to try to get out of this two-on-one situation on your wrist. And roll a front, a front flip as he did right there. And he turns the tables on Royce Isaacs. Hip toss, block. Isaacs went for the swing and the miss. O'Connor roll blocked by Isaacs, but Kazarian arm drag, and he hangs on there. You know, sometimes, as you know, Excalibur, good old-fashioned arm drag could, you know, get it done. Take your opponent off the vertical base, get control of, you know, one of their arms, and uh, you're in good shape. And that's where Kazarian's at right about now. Well, he was. Big yeah, right hand to the midsection. Heads up, tag out there to Jarrell Nelson. Well, Isaacs made a little mistake there, in my professional opinion. You know, he, he should not have left Frankie Kazarian in that neutral corner by himself. Yeah, should have pulled. Pulled Kazarian over to Jarrell Nelson, then made the tag out, and that would have set him up better for success. Him being Jarrell Nelson, double That's right. stop there. Can't leave your opponent in a tag team match solo in a neutral corner because well, you, 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 now you tag your partner in, and it's almost like the guy's damn near fresh. He's got nothing on him, nobody on him. And that's what happened with Kazarian. Hammer throw into the corner. Ooh. Nelson brought down hard there by the fallen angel, Christopher Daniels. Two, no. Good strong cover by Daniels. See how Daniels keeps his, he splits the ring in half. At that one point, they kept his back towards the opponent's corner. Side headlock here applied by Daniels. Great escape out by Nelson. Daniels walked right into the scoop slam. Again, same thing, leaving Daniels in the middle of the ring. I'm, and, I'm not trying to bury these guys, but you gotta be smarter than that. That's what happens. Well, that's why Christopher Daniels is known as the ring general. That, that minor mental lapse by Isaacs and Nelson really cost him, allowed Daniels to get back to his feet and start capitalizing here. Just can't leave your opponent solo, especially <laughs> veterans like these two cats, SCU. And Taz, what did Christopher Daniels do? He brought Isaacs over to the corner when he Correct. made the tag out to Kazarian. It's almost like they could hear me. Kind of. Maybe not, but you understand. Yes, but you're correct. They got an IFB? No, I, I, can't, so. I can't see the cable. <laughs> Kazarian. Bringing, uh, bringing Royce Isaacs up to his feet. Just for Daniels, shoulder to the midsection. Daniels whoa, whoa. goes over the top, rolls Isaacs through. Low, and Zigiri hooks the far leg. Does Daniels kick out there by Royce Isaacs? Good job, and Daniels took the stare down right there. Was his partner, and he realizes I'm going to see again. Daniels keeping his back to this is his opponent's corner. He's got control right now. Oh, Isaacs escapes out of the fireman's carry. Oh, big right hand drops Jarrell Nelson to a knee. Yeah, now Isaacs is in trouble. Oh, maybe not. Isaacs. Oh, the hot shot on the top rope. Oh, oh. nasty. Big boot to the face of Christopher Daniels. Deadlift fisherman suplex there by Royce Isaacs. Yeah, good power by Isaacs. Isaacs now. Oh, a little headbutt action there. Trying to daze Christopher Daniels. Now you see, <laughs> he realizes that he pulls him over to the corner, which it's helping now. It's, it's you're getting success that way. Great tag team offense here by Nelson and Isaacs. I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, he's bur burning daylight, man. Yeah, man, I just wouldn't uh, gloat too much. I'd stay on, you know, guys like SCU. You have an opportunity. You're here, you know, in AEW, get an opportunity. You, you know, you got to turn it up, man. Those body shots are strong, but. I would love to see him do it about, you know, 25, 30 seconds ago. If you knock off the top-ranked contenders in SCU, I mean, that, that could be a career-defining victory here for, for Isaacs well, and Nelson. And as you pointed out earlier, Rex Cal, just imagine if, you're the, if you are the team that breaks up the unit known as STU, then that, because they, you beat them, that's huge. That is huge. And, and I mean, you, you go down in the history books, man. Yeah. Ooh, clothesline there, drops Daniels. I'm still looking for all his books. Cover here, one, two. For years I've heard about these history books and the rule book. Well, they're at library. Find any of them. They're library. When was the last time you were in a public library? Well, I talked to Leva Bates. She always goes to the library, so she tells me what's there. Well, that was a non-answer. Well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> hello. Yes. The rule book, too. Where is this rule book? It's in the R section. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. R for wrestling. Yeah. Oh, so to the midsection. Wrestling. Well, yeah, Daniels is in bad shape Yeah, here. he got doubled over there. Royce Isaacs. Dropped to a knee. 
make yourself a lot heavier, so Isaacs could not suplex Daniels. Daniels sent in. Isaacs telegraphed him. A back heel trip, the STO. Yeah, nice sweep of that leg out. A little quarter roll getting in Kazarian. Jarrell Nelson swinging a miss, but Kazarian didn't miss with those. Oh, shotgun drop kick, knocking Isaacs back to the corner. Leg lariat. Drops Jarrell Nelson. Isaacs reverses Kazarian, but Kazarian comes firing back with the forearm. He's cooking right now, Kazarian. Whoa. Frankie Kazarian elevated up and over the top swing and a miss, but he didn't miss that time with a leg drop. Shoulder to the midsection of yeah. Royce Isaacs. Stopped Isaacs in his tracks. Sunset flip. No. Well, these guys are putting up a good fight, I'll tell you that. Royce Isaacs hits the rose walk right into the body oh. slam. And Frank Kazarian comes off the middle rope. The big, big leg drop. Strong, that springboard twisting leg drop. This could be the end of the night, or very nearly the end of the night for Royce Isaacs. He's brought up on the shoulder of Frankie Kazarian. Oh, but Jarrell Nelson. I think SCU was on the, not on the right page there together, I think. Had it. Oh, it's Nelson. What about, about not being the right page? You got a little friendly fire there. Seeing this opportunity slip through his fingertips. Right big hand. Haymaker, yeah, big haymaker by Kazarian. Kazarian sent in the Oh, Ooh. drop kick takes out Isaacs on the outside. Jarrell Nelson. Yeah, Nelson got blasted there. Isaacs on the outside. Oh, Jarrell Nelson coming. Oh, ran right into that elbow by Christopher Daniels. Nelson exchanging. Exchange of blows right here with Daniels. Jeez. Daniels, Daniels hitting him like he owes the money. Chopping at Nelson, but the knee to the midsection cuts off the momentum of Christopher Daniels. Irish whip into the corner. Uh-oh. Frankie Kazarian turns Nelson inside out with a big clubbing shot. Royce Isaacs, though, one of his own. Daniels plants Isaacs, and now it could be the best moonsault ever. Hooks the far leg and gets the win. No winners of this match, SCU. And just keep on rocking, man. FCU just keeps on rocking and rolling. And SCU has a date with Destiny in their future. They will face either the Young Bucks or Death Triangle. Ray Phoenix and Pac with the AEW World Tag Team Championship on the line. Is that best boot salt ever? Perfectly done always, year after year after year by Chris Daniels. Nice tight cradle right there, Gibson. Victory, good job. The important victory here for SCU, but at this point, Taz, they're all important victories. Yeah, no, you're right. Action in the women's division as the super bad girl Penelope Ford with Kip Sabian at her side will take on Miranda Alizé. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied by Kip Sabian from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Penelope Ford. Taz, we've seen, uh, we've seen that all is not well between Miro, the supposed best man, Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford. Yeah, no, I know. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you got the whole thing with Penelope. Yeah, Miro, all he cares about is winning at any cost. But and Miro's super intense, too, which I actually I love about the guy. He's an amazing athlete, too. That's his Kip, and so is Penelope. So let's see what happens here. Miranda Alizé. Rebounding off the middle rope, ducking under. Close line attempt, step up, work on Rana. Penelope Ford getting strung up in that bottom rope. Miranda Alize looking good here. Create some distance. Oh, one for the baseball sliding kick. Penelope turned her around, just rocked her on the jaw with an elbow strike. Strong, strong forearm. 
elbow shot right to the jaw. You can see Alizé's holding on there. She, she got nailed. Taz, what about the main event of Dynamite last week, that unsanctioned lights out match? Oh my God, it was insane. Thunder Rosa defeating Dr. Britt Baker. The first time a lights out match. Oh, look at this, Miranda Alizé. First time a, a lights out match on Dynamite. It was awesome. I mean, it was intense. It was physical. It was brutal. I mean, it was those ladies, those women, uh, beat the holy high hell out of each other. Alize elevated above the top rope. Oh, big right elbow strike there by no, Penelope. She's rocking and she's looking good. Ooh! Wow. The knee, I think they actually dropped on the face of Miranda Alize. I think she wanted to kiss Kip. But Kip walked away. I don't think Kip realized I think, I think, it. I think Kip was shocked by the viciousness of that knee drop. Let's like, see. Let's take a look here. The leg drop. I'm uh, not leg drop. The, the leg driving, I should say. Ooh, knees. Yeah, and Kip kids. was Kip was stunned by he it. He was. Now Penelope built up ahead of steam, put to the side of the head. Miranda Alizé in real trouble here. Yeah, and you know what? Penelope realizes that Miranda's in a lot of shit. Yeah, see, he, she owed it. He, the kiss was old. Someone owed someone. They are always, you know, sucking face. You know what I'm saying? Alizé brought back towards the center of the ring by Penelope Ford. Great multitasking there, Tez. Yeah, you, you beat up uh, your opponent and you suck face with your man. I mean, if you're a Penelope. I mean, it doesn't just have to be Penelope. A lot of people are doing that, Tez. Well, most people aren't fighting and kissing their significant other on, you know, worldwide YouTubes. Look at Miranda here. Miranda Alizé. Oh! Eats an elbow strike. Now before though, eats one of her own. Built up good speed. Nice explosion footwork right there by Miranda. Oh! oh boy! Penelope just dropped Miranda, but Miranda Alizé not out of this one yet. Strong high round kick was, was definitely heavy duty. Miranda, he caught it right on the mouth. She's holding the teeth or jaw area. Penelope Ford coming off the ropes. Oh, went for that uh, cutter perhaps. Alizé spun out with Penelope Ford. He dropped her. We have an upset oh, whoa, whoa, in the whoa, making whoa. here. That would have been a big, big upset, dude. That was close, man. Great back and forth contest here. As Miranda Alizé has Penelope Ford against the ropes. Oh, drop toe hold there. Here we go, Jones. Maybe. No, maybe not. Oh, no, just a kick to the lower back. Miranda in bad shape. Penelope. Oh, you just heard Kip saying, finish it. It's almost like, what's that game? Finish him. Penelope Ford with Miranda Alizé up on the show. Oh. Driving all the wind out of the lungs of Alizé and now Penelope. Fisherman suplex high arch two and three. The winner of this match, Penelope Ford. You know, excellent job by Penelope to nail that fisherman. She's done that many times we've seen in the past. Awesome bridge. Gets high up on the tippy toes and picks up the victory. He's a Rick Knox, what you leave him alone and make an out? You know what I mean? He's like trying to raise it. Come on, Rick, I mean, what's the deal? The guy's making out with his lady, and you're trying to touch the girl's wrist. Freaking Rick. Look at Rick, leave them alone, Rick, you nut job. What the hell's wrong with Rick? But Penelope Ford, victorious. Yeah, things looking real good here, Butch. You're getting the job done. Keep it up, huh? Why can't I get in? Hey, you know the rules. Go get yourself a jacket. Putting it all on black. Uh, I'm a stat 
man myself, and the stats say we should put it on red. <laughs> We're the Dark Order. Are you ready to play? <laughs> I'm ready to win. Six man tag team action coming up right now on Dark featuring the Gun Club. This is a six man tag team match set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Orlando, Florida, at a total combined weight of 690 pounds, Billy, Austin, and Colton Gunn, the Gun Club. Hey, Ricky. Yeah. I'm going to start a new faction. I'm going to call it Knife Club. <laughs> OK. Because a couple months ago, I bought a really nice uh, chef's knife for the kitchen. Japanese chef's knife, yeah, okay. I did, yeah. And uh, you got a samurai sword. No, it's, it's a Damascus blade. Hold on, let, let oh, Justin do yeah, your Justin job. Do and your their job. opponents at a total combined weight of 626 pounds, a team of Baron Black, Jake St. Patrick, and Adam Priest. It's got a, a you know, a hammered Damascus blade, and um, who gives a rat's ass, bro? I'm into I'm talking to Ricky here, Taz. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I thought I was part of the broadcast team. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Ricky, you would not believe how this thing cuts tomatoes. I'm into that. <laughs> Knife club, I'm telling you. I want to be a part of it. I'll send you an email. Oh, stop the pain. Dollar oh, knife club. Oh, no, no, this is not dollar. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I might I might have had a little bit to drink before I ordered this knife. <laughs> you spend more than a dollar on a knife? Spend it now, make it later. Exactly, Taz. Oh, you want to be a knife? No, I don't want I nothing to do with you outside of work. Oh. <laughs> Austin Gunn's got to try and escape out of these uh, mat returns, get break the grip right there of Priest and get out of this thing. Adam Priest getting his hands pried apart by Austin Gunn, but immediately transitions into that side headlock. Great move there. I like Priest because he has a good center of gravity, so those waist locks, those headlocks, they all sure. they yeah. all mean something, you know? Yeah, strong young man, you can tell. He's put together. Whoa, oh. nice quickness right there by Austin. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Flipping a face buster. Wow, just yeah, he's got the firing guy. into the crowd. He's got three holsters. Does this man's energy ever just deplete? No. Jeez. He's, a, he's an ever ready ba battery rabbit, whatever the gimmick is. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. I know that. Commercial. You know the one. You know the one. Yeah. It uh -oh. Beats the, uh -oh. Aaron Black got to be careful with the uh, the veteran known as Billy Gunn. On an elbow tie up. You got to be careful with Billy. Trust me. Oh, no. <laughs> well. Whoa. Whoa. Baron Black. Oh, good job by Baron. He's in that quickness. And Billy, you saw it just grabbed a side headlock. I think uh, that chop from Baron Black may have stung a little bit more than Billy wants to let on. Might have pissed off Billy, too. He starts to join Sneeze Club. Well, be polite. Nice block of the hip toss right there by Billy. Whoa, watch out. Whoa. Oh. Massive hip toss followed up by an even bigger chop. I don't want to know what that feels like, but I like seeing it happen to other people. Yeah, well, yeah. that's because you're a very intelligent man. Does that make me evil? No, it makes you smart. <laughs> smart and evil. And evil. Uh -oh. <laughs> Gun club. Oh! Oh! Did, Wait he get the, did he get it in? Yes, he did. You sure? Those long limbs of his did. It looked like more he just smashed Baron Black in the face, actually. Got him. A little, little step, a little weak hole on, uh, on the court. Stutter step? Stutter. No, nah, it wasn't a stutter. Jab step, bro. Learn Breaking ankles. Learn the game. Learn the game. He never played basketball. He don't know. Oh, watch out. Oh. Whoa. Great counter there. But, oh, I thought St. Patrick had it countered, but Colton Gunn. Uh-oh. Things are oh. breaking down, getting ugly here. Breaking down in Jacksonville. Austin. 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 Your dad's taught me. <laughs> A little dousy dough there by Baron and Priest. 
Jake St. Patrick isolated inside the ring. If I yelled something towards Hook, he just flipped me off. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't left. Oh! <laughs> I've seen it. That's why I'm laughing. <laughs> oh, a 310 to Yuma. Got it. And that is it. Wow. No winners of this match. The Gun Club. Another important victory for this Gun Club trio. How impressive do these guys look, Ricky? You know, I'm actually mad because blue is my color, and I don't get what's going on here. Well, it's definitely not orange, so blue is definitely your color, my friend. <laughs> it clashes with his skin tone. I've heard the uh, pretender Yuma. There it is. Good job by the gun club. He's shooting left and right. Austin Gunn, he's got like a Gatling gun. Yeah, da, 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 da. You know what that is? Yeah, I used it one time. Did you really? Yeah. Damn, you're a trouble. cowboy, man. You are a cowboy. A New Orleans cowboy. Cajun cowboy, Ricky Stark. Get That's what you're doing. <laughs> I love that. Cajun cowboy. Cajun cowboy. High-flying action in store for you next as Jack Evans from the heavens takes on Dante Martin of Top Flight next here on AEW Dark. This contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Parkland, Washington, weighing 172 pounds, Jack Evans. Jack Evans from the heavens, representing TH2 here tonight, but in singles competition. Two tag team specialists squaring off one-on-one. -on -one. You know, one time I went to this Jack Johnson concert over at the Jones Beach Theater on the lawn in the summer, right? And this guy was dancing in front of me to one of the songs. He was doing like the Jack Evans and Helicone, like whatever you call that little dance they do. And he was all whacked out, like he was drinking, he was smoking a bunch of weed. He was all whacked out. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, this dude's dancing. My wife said, please don't say that. I wanted to crack him, dude. I'm not kidding. And true story. From Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing 195 pounds, Dante Martin. Like Dante. Top flight's legit. Rick, Ricky, do you understand what that anecdote had to do with Jack Evans? A little bit. The thing that I pulled from that story was that Taz has lived many lives ten times over. <laughs> oh oh. So we have one of uh, the best high flyers of all time in Jack Evans. Absolutely. Facing off with one of the, the best Young and up and coming. Dude, this thing, this thing might get a little nuts. This match, these two guys, you never know, man. Dante Martin, it's like oh. he's got springs in his legs. Super athletic. I'll have to get Ricky. Ricky, what's your thoughts on Dante, man? You, you know, cause you're, you're honest about it. You're obviously in, the, in your prime prime and you're a leader in the locker room. What's your thoughts? Honestly, the first time I saw him, I was jealous because of his hops, but then I realized I'm Ricky Starks. Oh, nice. and there's no comparison. Okay. But I will give credit where credit is due. This kid is talented. He is. Look at so him. is his brother. Look at that. Yep. Nice deep arm drag. Another one. And the trifecta. Wow. Dante holds on. Well, you can't really do an arm. You guys know this. It's really hard to do an arm drag better than that. that those are perfect arm drags. Basic fundamental wrestling moves, but with his athleticism and quickness and his foot speed, he makes it even better. Dante looking good here oh, in whoa. singles competition. Oh, nice. Uh oh, nice oh, counter. Oh, counter by nice. Evans. Uh, I was I was going to say that a uh, top Ooh, flight un undefeated this year in tag team competition, and uh, Darius did suffer a, a minor injury out of action for just a short period of time. But on his knee, yes. Yeah, but I think oh, great pinpoint accuracy on that drop kick. Top flight, once uh, once Darius returns, will continue their ascent in this tag team division here. The deepest tag team division in all of pro wrestling. Both of these men are tag team wrestlers, as you guys know. And in singles competition right now, uh -oh. what's Dante up to here? Dante, 450. Oh, whoa. Oh, they might have come down on Evans' back. They might have caught him in the kidney, and Evans didn't even react. Evans. Oh, oh corkscrew kick. All it takes, it, it takes just one small mistake. Well, see the experience, sorry, Ricky, but the experience advantage that Evans has paid off for him right there against Dante. Can he follow up and keep it on? That's the key here. Big sledge across the spine by Jack Evans. You got to turn the stank up on it, you know? 
Yeah. You can Turn the stink in. up. Turn the stink up, baby. <laughs> Jack Johnson did on Jones Beach. Oh, it was bad, bro. God bless Jack Johnson. He's Double the man. Day. Oh, he's the man. With the box. The, yes, sir. Yeah. How did you know? Beautiful people. I love boxing. It's the sweet seconds. Watch out. Oh! oh. Good job. Jack. Handspring back elbow. Evans. Dante Martin a bit oh. rattled the rider kick by Jack Evans. Finds its mark. Yeah, Dante's in trouble here. Deep cover here, too. Jack Evans must be made of jello. The way his body moves and contorts, it doesn't make sense to me. You know? Some ugly jello, bro. The, uh, <laughs> the official terminology. Might be tapioca. His Gumby body. Gumby body. I've never heard that before. It must be a West Great Coast cartoon. Yeah. It's actually a Long Island thing. Mount Sinai. It's a Rikers Mount Island Sinai. thing. Oh, Suffolk County Jones. All right. That's not Mount Sinai. It's actually a Trentism. Mount Sinai? The whole Trent. Trent Ricky's returning. still trying to keep up on Mount Sinai. <laughs> Mount no. Sinai, that's poison. No! Oh, no! Oh, no, that was poison. That was ugly, nasty, but beautifully done by Dante. Cyanide hey. is the poison. Uh, Mount Sinai is a town, town in Suffolk County. Famous hospital. Jack's dead. <laughs> uh, dude, you might be right, man. He, he landed so hard on that stage. God, it was nasty. I want to let you know Gumby also gets exposed in his cartoon as well by being blown up. Yeah, well, he has no cardio, Gumby. That's oh. obvious. Look at that chop right there. <laughs> Beautiful chop. <laughs> oh, what a shot. We might have lost Excalibur, folks. Look at that drop kick. Dante is cooking, baby. Whoa, oh, and ahead goes Evans. Keep it on, Dante. Dante Martin. Turn it up. Stringing together some impressive offense here. Bandera sends him up and over the top. The right hand blocked by Dante Evans. Sent face first into that top turnbuckle pad. Whoa. Can you believe that? Deep hook and low. Super close. Wow. I, I, I just, I'm flabbergasted. That was tremendously done. They laid me out. Dante Martin up to his feet. You can see wearing the the abrasions, wearing the scars of battle here tonight against Jack Evans. Jack Evans baited him in, though. Uh-oh. Evans goes over the oh, top. Oh, wow. Not a good place to be, man. Great counter. God, this is where, I'll tell you, this is where Evans is very dangerous. He's dangerous. Jack Evans. Oh, Dante able to avoid contact. Boot to the midsection there. What the heck are these guys up to here on the outside? Oh, no. Irish whip into the rope. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's a stud, man. He is a stud. Oh, oh. big right hand there by Dante Martin. Dude, that's hard to uh, do what he uh, did there. You know what I mean? That is not, not, it's not an easy thing to do. Dante, what the hell is this? Uh oh, coming over that. Oh! Come on, man. My God. He's got to be done. Evan just done ski. Got to be done. Destroyer on the outside. Dante Martin headed up top. Go ahead, kid. Oh! 50 splash. Two, three. Wow. Incredible. The winner of this match, Dante Martin. So you watch good match. Well, well, real good match, I should say, by both men. Look at this. Look at this. You are not kidding, man. Look at this. Oh. Cleared yeah. the barricade. Hit him with the destroyer, and then the 450. It was all she wrote. Dante Martin picking up his first ever singles victory here tonight in all elite wrestling. That was a fun match, man. That was so highly athletic. Uh oh. Oh, oh, oh it's in Helico. Oh, here. no. Helico, watch out. Oh. And Helico with a cheap shot. Dante had his back turned. Oh. That's real teamwork. I like that. Well, I mean, you know, and Alico knows. And oh, wait a minute. Oh, Darius. Oh, Darius. Darius not, not medically cleared. He's not 100% at all. He's got a knee issue for sure. And he's not going to sit back and let his brother get brutalized by TH2. No doubt. Referee Mike Posey trying to restrain Darius, trying to keep him out of the ring. We got a feeling this stuff here with... Uh, Top flight in TH2 is far from Gonski, you know what I mean? Yeah, when Darius gets healthy, 
I think Top Flight have a date with the Hybrid 2 in the future. Well, it's main event time, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. The FTW title is on the line. Brian Cage, the machine, with Hook in his corner against Brandon Cutler. Right now. This contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit is for the FTW World Heavyweight Championship. Being accompanied to the ring by Hook from Chico, California. Weighing 272 pounds, he is the reigning and defending FTW World Heavyweight Champion, the machine, Brian Key. Taz, it's customary for the champion to come out second, but I guess because the FTW title is not a recognized championship here in AEW, Cage coming out first. Yeah, and, and that's fine. That's fine. That's, you know, that's great. That's what we want. We want that kind of dominance. And obviously, to your right, absolute Ricky Starks in the house right here. Another proud member of Team Taz. And welcome to the booth again. We're back, AEW. baby. We're back. AEW I was waiting for you to say Starks. I know, I know, but I got AEW the AEW Starks. <laughs> Uh-oh. And the challenger from Rancho Cucamonga, California, weighing 192 pounds, Brandon Cutler. Brandon Cutler, as we've seen in the past, once he gets the ball or the polyhedral die rolling, he can be a tough out. I think the machine Brian Cage might have his hand full well, here tonight. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, listen, wow. that, 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 it's, look, can't sleep on Cutler. He has been, he has been pretty red hot. I mean, he had a problem with Will Hobbs, obviously, recently. Yep. But we, we shut him down there, but he's no joke. There's no doubt about it. And, and I do think this will be a strong match. I'm not sure what you feel, Ricky, but I do. And we obviously hope, even though we've had some issues. Yes. That, yeah. that Brian will be victorious and retain that FTW championship. Well, that's the hope, isn't it? That's right. the hope. Absolutely. Uh, but, you know, uh, those issues aside, absolute Ricky Starks has faith in Brian Cage. Let me just yes. say it like that. Yes, and listen, we, we, we can't ignore the fact, even in a tag team match recently here on Dark, yeah. there was some tension. And we worked that tension with you and, and Cage, and we worked that out backstage. And stuff happens. Strong mat return by the big man. Well, we saw it last, uh, last Wednesday night on Dynamite. Brian Cage coming out and giving uh, giving some kudos to Sting. Oh well, uh, yeah, Ricky. Yeah, well, I Lord just it, I mean, it, Excalibur's over here trying to you know muddy up the waters here again. I'm just stating settled? facts. Okay, go ahead, state them. That Brian Cage gave kudos to Sting. Yeah, and we don't know why. Yeah, we don't. We really don't. And when he ripped the microphone out of my hand, which was not cool. Oh. You know, I think Hobbs, Hook, and and Stalks, and we were all in the impression that well, you know, Cage was going to get in the grill of Sting instead of kicking Sting's ass. He kind of oh kissed Sting's ass, but whatever. Oh, oh. nice job. Good job. Tremendous Death Valley driver there by yeah. Brian Cage. Who better, huh? Mm. Well, you know, listen. We, we, look, it's been a, it's been a little rough. I mean, after the street fight, what happened at Revolution? It was tough, Ricky, as you know. And you looked great. You did a great job. And you know, we've talked privately, and so did Brian. We came up short, but yes. we've moved on. We're gonna onward and upward. Yes, we have to we have to make up a new game plan here, right, and I'm right. hoping that this is the start of it. Obviously, yeah. past Dynamite it didn't get off to a good start, but hey. Well, because Brian decided to do this for himself. I mean, I mean, it's to us. Just call it yeah. a spade a Yeah. God. This might be the end right here, though. Here we go. Cage lifting Cutler up. Cutler, though, going over the top. Trying to go for the sunset flip. Come on, Cage. Oh, jeez. Oh, I roundhouse. Hey, see, I was, I was worried about that. The striking ability, you know, sometimes Brian can, he takes these strikes. He don't take them well when someone starts drilling. That's what I was worried about. Swing and a miss there. Oh, oh another one. The see? long legs of Cutler. That's, that's it. That's one of the things that he has the advantage the on. Ranginess, you're right. And Cutler, oh. Tope. Sends Cage back to the barricade and immediately into the ring. Brandon Cutler. Slow him down here, Cage. Come the on, man. Springboard cross body. Well. Two. No. And that's because Brian had him dead to rights early and he's playing too much games and now Cutler is bouncing back. Well, are we surprised, Taz? Uh, no. Yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, man. Okay. And, 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 and I got to tell you, I, I saw Hook over there. He looks a little ticked off. He hasn't moved. 
um, on the outside. We don't see him right now because when they came out, if you guys notice, he <laughs> Hook went to give some knocks. Didn't the return cage, it. He just blew him off. Oh, oh. that's nice. Come on. Cage covers nice. up the Here far leg. Two, no. Show him why you're champion. Show him why you're the FTW champion. Taz, if, if Brandon Cutler is victorious in this match tonight, if he becomes FTW champion, are you going to have to consider bringing him into the fold of Team Taz? Uh, quite frankly, I didn't think of that because I just feel like Brian will win. <laughs> but if that would have happened, no, I would not have Cutler in Team Taz, but he would be the uh, oh. recognized FTW champion. Well, Brandon Cutler just got rocked there by Brian Cage. And some people are confused still about the FTW World Championship. It's been rogue for years. It's a rogue championship. I had a meeting last week with Tony Khan, and AEW understands, and, and we're, it's not recognized in AEW, but the championship is being respected now. It's being moved upward, let's put it that way. Well, that's what we're witnessing here. Cutler well, powerbomb oh. here. Cover! Kick oh, out! No. Oh, I'd like to point out that the champion can only, you know, I'll be honest with you, it's Cage's fault. Because he is the champion, right. and as a champion, you should present that that title. You should present the FTW well, title I, as it is. I, yes, sir. You're not gonna hear me argue, and, and I don't mean to get hot here, no, but damn. No, but you're speaking Come on. the truth. Big springboard elbow strike. What? Drop Brian Cage. Don't point you're to not, me, you he's, idiot. He's pointing to me since he's taking my belt. And Stop Brandon my Cutler. Belt. You give me a kick out, Cage. Drop the elbow. Oh, like this. No, we almost had a new champion. Let this guy embarrass me. Who the hell is Brandon Cutler to look at me and yell over here, Ricky? What the hell is that? Come on, Cage. This is what I'm talking about. He's FTW in, champion. You got to put it to use. He's embarrassing us. Come on, Brian. Damn it. Brandon Cutler off the top gets whoa, caught by whoa, Kane. Baby. Oh, that was bad. And oh, drill claw. That was badass. That was cool. Thank God. Brian Cage retains the FTW Championship. The winner of this match. And it should have been. That's FTW the thing. It should have been. World Heavyweight Champion, the Machine, Brian Cage. Well, the the catch and the drill claw. Spelled the end of the night for Brandon Cutler and his hopes of becoming the FTW Heavyweight Champion. Well, you see it right well. well. Look, I'm just glad Brian was victorious and retained the championship because it got a little sketchy there for a second. It got a little, uh, you know, uh, it was a little rough. Brian we gotta Cage. Figure this out, Starks. We got to we gotta talk. Something's got to change. Yeah. Big singles contest coming up as Ashley Vox goes one on one with Alex Gracia next here on AEW Dark. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit approaching the ring from the Ocean State. Ashley Vox. As we saw Ashley Vox compete last week here on AEW Dark. Very, very impressive against Ty Conti, but Conti picked up the victory. As I pointed out to teach some of you people, the Ocean State is Rhode Island. Understand that's up in New England in those rotten Patriots. Also by those painful beaches. I mean the football team. Yeah. Another opponent from San Antonio, Texas, Alex Gracia. Alex Gracia returning to action here tonight on AEW Dark. Big opportunity here for both competitors. Really uh, separate themselves from the pack. Absolutely. It's gonna be interesting. It's uh, kind of a toss-up type situation here, so, um, hmm. Yeah, Ashley Vox, primarily a uh, tag team competitor All alongside right. her sister, Delmi XO, Team C Stars. Well, we don't normally do this X the caliber. Um, who do you pick to be the winner in this match? I know you live your life on the fence, so I just figured I'd ask you maybe for once, man up. Actually, I live, live my life on the hedge. Can we get a can we get negative one out here? Because I got I got a twenty dollar bill burning a hole in my pocket. I want, I'm gonna I want to get some action on this match. All right. Well, you don't have you don't have to pick it. You're supposed to be uh, unbiased, Jones. Thanks, Jess. Watch out here. Whoa! Fox just got caught in the gut with that shoulder, and look at Gracia oh, slides yeah. in. Kick out, and uh, now Alex Gracia comes off of the crossbody, low crossbody. Drop kick there, single leg drop kick. Alex Gracia, stringing together a 
Series of offense here. Oh, nice quickness by Vox. Vox rolled Grassi at the three. Oh, oh, oh boy. Oh, oof. That was oh, that was snug. Powerful drop kick there from Gracia. Man, that was cover here. Oof. Looks the far leg. No. <laughs> that was uh, definitely will knock the wind out of you. Get kicked in the chest like that. It's gonna knock the hell out you. Ashley Vox, ooh, big wind up there. Gracia returns in kind. Yeah, these girls are swinging. Oh, the fish hook applied, and the headbutt. Might be gimmick infringement. Cracks the jaw. Well, no, she's the real catch, Taz. She's got, that's why she does a fish I hook. know the Ocean State, Rhode Island, I got it. Thanks, Taz. Putting pressure on the shoulder. Oh, let's count her out. Gracia gets the leg swept out. Cover attempted, barely a one count. Over there by Gracia. Very evenly matched contest thus far. Watch out. Two count. Oh, look at this. Deep stack. Vox. Mm, keep Eight. an eye on those shoulders, though. Gracia. Really trying, to, trying to escape the, the fish hook. Yes, she is. She's got it locked in tight. Oh, oh. And she taps out. Wow. The winner of this match, Ashley Vox. I got to tell you. I didn't say it, but I did think that Gracia was going to win this match. I'm surprised. I was actually going to say Vox, so that's interesting. We should have oh, put money on it, Tess. We probably should have just love to gamble. You are just a degenerate. A I mean, great a way, by the way. victory, and the first victory here in AEW for Ashley Vox. Tag team action coming up right now. Sonny Kiss and Joey Janela in action. This is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Coming down the aisle at a combined weight of 391 pounds. The concrete room. Sonny Kiss and Okay, bro, the mic, the headset's yeah. not working. It's not on, bro. The headset's not plugged in, Good <laughs> bad boy, Joey Janella. Janella's screaming in a headset that's not even on. It's tremendous. Joey Janella obviously did not graduate with honors in the audio engineering program from the Spex Howard School of Broadcasting. Joey Janella and Sonny Kiss. We saw a little bit of a, a conflict last week here on AEW Dark. We'll get to that in a second. And their opponents had a combined weight of 399 pounds, the team of Vare Morales and Seth Gorgas. And we saw a little bit of conflict between their opponents as well last week, Taz. Yes, we sure did, Excalibur. We sure damn well did. Care, care to enlighten anybody and who those people are? I'm lo kind of locked in right now to see Janela and Vare Maladas. What's that? It was Team Taz, though. No, I know that, but I'm not. Well, what about Because there was dissension the in the match. I don't want to bring that up with Ricky, and which I'm trying to. We got some stuff going on, obviously. I'm trying to keep it right with those guys and the whole team. But you got to bring it up and stir it up. And then there was issues with Janela and Sonny Kiss at the end of, the, at the end of that match. There's a lot of issues everywhere. Byron Morales fight for a uh, top wrist lock. Now gets the side headlock on Joey Janela. Morales being backed into the ropes. Janela goes for the trip. Morales able to avoid it. Single leg trip by Janela. Morales back up to his feet. Byron Morales, we've seen uh, some impressive flourishes from him. They're highly athletic, unlike Joey. Is a mess. See? Asking for one more chance at it. Well, he's kind of close. If his goal is to rub his ass on the mat, he did it. Like a like a dog. He's he training. Yeah. <laughs> Just like a dog in Jersey. Oh, he almost blew his Dynaflow out. Oh! That worked. Well, that thrust kick to the face of Vary Morales. Oh, I, I'm not quite I sure what Janela was doing there. there bro. 
<laughs> Double Irish whip into the ropes. Morales kicked to the face of Sonny Kiss. Went for the NZ Gary. Joey Janela. Joe going Janelle. Romero Jones here. You know Romero Jones. Yeah, Cesar Romero's brother. Benedict Caesar salad. And oh! Look at this tag team offense here. Seth Gawk is not having it. Janella and Sonny really making uh, the most the referee's uh, 10 count, that extended 10 count to leave the ring after a uh, tag. All right, Sonny Kiss coming in, hooks the leg. Sonny coming in hot. Seth Gargas, a little bit rattled here. Caught off guard by Sonny Kiss. Gargas using his power back at Sonny up to the corner. Seth Gargas is just a large gargantuan like man. They should be Seth Gargantuan man. God. Ooh. I think he had it right in the first part, but then he kept adding on to it. I have an issue. No, you do. Yeah, I think you do. Just like Team Taz. Oh, that's so classy of you. you punk. Whoa! Wow. Big right hands there. Big roundhouse like right hands. Joey Janela shoulder tackle Seth Gargas. Back a few steps up. Tough to knock that big Gargas down. Swing and a miss avoided by Janela. Janela leaves his feet and takes down Seth Gargas. The bad boy, Joey Janela, keeping the pressure on Gargas. It'll be tough to get Gargas up for a vertical suplex, whatever he's got in mind. Tag out to Sonny Kiss. Now, tag team suplex. Sonny Kiss and Joey Janela with Seth Gargas in their sights. Yeah, good teamwork. Kick to the midsection thrust kick. Big rolling elbow strike. And Vary Mor oh, Vary Morales. He's got a shot to the midsection. Morales is gonna go fly. Oh, right oh. on his head. Oh boy. Inside hook with that. Got planted and oh look at that Gargas. He got caught up on his own partner and just ate a series of kicks from Kiss and Janela. Uh-oh. Joey Janela. Yeah, they got some kind of a tandem maneuver in mind. Look at that, the split out into the reverse DDT. And Kiss and Janela pick up the victory. The winners of this match, Joey Janela and Sonny Kiss. Interesting, you sound like you're saying Kissinger Janela. It sounds like somebody. Yes, so, you know, Henry Kissinger, remember him? Yeah. And then his friend, Bob Janela. The two Jersey uh, folks are victorious. Good old Hank Kissinger making his first appearance here <laughs> on AEW Dark. Kissinger Janela, ladies and gentlemen. The master of the tornado, DDT Fuego Del Sol, will go one on one with the big and mean JD Drake next. The following contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. To be accompanied to the ring by the Hollywood hunk from Shelby, North Carolina, weighing 301 pounds, J.D. Drake. Well, last night on Elevation, we saw something of an unlikely alliance formed between J.D. Drake and the Hollywood hunk, Ryan Nemeth. I'm not sure what these two men quite have in common. And his opponent from Mobile, Alabama, weighing 165 pounds, Fuego de la Sol. Anthony, a big size mismatch as you try to grab my water bottle. I saw that. Well, I was actually gonna take the napkin and put my chewing gum in, because uh. I'm a professional. <laughs> And pros don't chew chewing gum on air. <laughs> there I am. Cool. Look at that little turtle on there. Lovely jubbly. Yeah, mate, yeah, it's got a massive size advantage for 
for JD Drake. Um, Fuego's got his workout tonight. Good kicks there by Fuego del Sol. Taz, we've had a couple chances to see JD Drake compete here. He's looked impressive, still in search of that first victory, though. Yeah, he's definitely a rugged, uh, rugged guy for sure. You can see the uh, strength here. Just, you know, Fuego giving up a plethora of body weight. That's obvious. Uh oh. Fuego. Like he's holding a small child. Oh, man, Drake. Just, he gave him a hip toss, but while Fuego was wrapped around him, that is just the strength advantage that JD Drake possesses. JD looks like the type of guy come out of like a butcher shop holding like a side of ham under one arm and just like a pig's head under the other arm. You know what I mean? That's actually a butcher. A butcher That's what I said. Right? I said a butcher. No, no. You said butcher shop. Anyway. It's a butcher shop. What the hell? Where's the butcher work? The shop. Like an assault. Uh oh, got caught oh, and dropped. Oh, oh, oh. Man, he just bipped him right in the head. Oh, that's a nasty, that's a nasty little yeah. punch there. It's kind of like a forearm kind of. It's just strike. Like he springs off and watch mm. the foot. You're right, it's forearm. Springs him off. And watch. Oh, here we go. Drake stopping Fuego's momentum. Go. Send him into the. the oh. Oh. Just a clubbing, cuffing shot. Where the hell's the butcher work, bro? The butcher shop. Where's the barber work? The barber shop. Where's the cobbler work, Taz? The cobbler shop, the shoe store. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> the shoe store. Oh, boy. Right. Fuego Dosel, he's, he's hoping he can pull out that tornado DDT. I mean, he's hit it a couple times, but thus far has been unable to put anybody away with it. J.D. Drake. Big, powerful shot coming off the uh, over the back, and you see Fuego struggling to catch his breath. Anthony. Yeah, he's a uh, JD Drake. is all business, no nonsense. I like him. I really. Oh, yeah, I like him too. He's got quick hands, right? You know, for a big man. Yeah, yeah. He's very agile, very agile, very nimble for a, yeah. such a big fellow. He's also very supple. Body shots there yeah, by Fuego. Nice strikes from Fuego. Oh, but JD Drake. Oh, that's that mean attitude, that aggressiveness by JD. Nothing artful, nothing fancy about it. Just all aggression. The body press here, too. No. We've seen Fuego a lot here on AW Dark. Oh, Ooh, nasty knee. And uh, he's got he's got a legion of like a cult following of fans because he's very tough, he's very resilient, and he never he never gives up. Quite frankly, he gets on my nerves. Uh, what? I'm just being Taz, honest. I am scandalized. I'm, I'm just being honest. Somebody gets saying, on your nerves? I'm not saying he's not a talented young man. He is. What about the Hollywood hunk, Brian Nemeth? I like Nemeth. Yeah, I do. He's a cool dude. He is. He's a cool dude. He is a Hollywood hunk. Everybody who hangs out on the beach in California, that's my style, bro, you know? Yeah, and that hair's natural. Yeah, natural hair. Natural. Yeah, he, yeah, sometimes he might dye his roots black. Right now, his roots are blonde. Mm -hmm. Changes with the seasons. I wonder how. I wonder how that 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 conversation between Nemeth and JD Drake, like how it, it happened. You know, it's such an odd pairing. A very odd pairing. You're it right. Is most certainly. Oh, look at that Fuego. Rolls up Drake. Oh. Oh, huge opportunity. Almost had him. He's got to keep following up if he can. Fuego's got to try to follow up. Oh. Fuego avoids contact. Coming off the middle rope. Cazadora, but Drake using his power. Oh, no, not using his power. Fuego able to drop him down face first on the knee. Kicks, kicks, kicks. Fuego. Whoa! Chopping the big guy down. Fuego looking impressive here. Standing slice, Brett. Nope, Drake. Ooh, massive nice, kick. Nice, that's it. Yeah. One, two, three. The winner of this match. J.D. Drake. Wow. Emphatic, impressive victory here for J.D. Drake. Yeah, I agree. I agree with Anthony, though. How did the conversation go with Nemeth and J.D.? Like, yeah, talk about opposites. Now, I wonder who approached who. I mean, I, yeah, I just... And they're, the only thing they have in common is they're both male. They both have legs and arms and ears. And they both breathe. They both breathe. Good point. The Taz. fashion, the clothing's totally. The, yes. Taz, where's the milliner work? The who? The milliner. 
The builder works at the milling, the mill shop. The <laughs> milling. It's the hat making shop. Oh, you're a douche. <laughs> Interesting matchup coming up right now. One on one, the captain, Sean Dean, goes against QT Marshall. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Chicago, Illinois, weighing 195 pounds, Sean Dean. Anthony, I tried this once before, and now I'm going to try it again. Can you give us any insight into what is going on inside the Nightmare family and the Nightmare factory? I can't. I, I, I could. It's getting a bit of muck going to it, okay? I'm here to do a job, and that's called this great match. Give him the deal! Sean Dean's in the house. I would argue by not telling you you're not doing your job. Man. Potato, potato. And his opponent, from the Big Apple, weighing 234 pounds, Q. T. Marshall. Bulldog in the house. Uh, 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 uh. Look at that record. 6 and 0. 6 and 0. QT Marshall. Undefeated in the year 2021. Anthony, did you get Bulldog? Did you get QT's face tattooed on your back yet? Uh, I'm, I'm booked in. I'm booked in as a tattooist <laughs> in the next couple of weeks, actually, Taz. I'll save you a spot. Uh, okay, cool. You got a Nightmare Factory track jacket? No, I have not yet. Uh, everybody else does. Yeah, well, I'm a little surprised you don't have one. Yeah, me too. You're only an Olympic right. athlete. You're only a stud boxer. I mean, why, what the hell is going on? I mean, yeah, some, some heads are going to roll. I don't blame you. Highly accomplished dancer, Anthony and Gogo. Yeah. I've heard all about it. Strictly from dancing. Yes. With pardon? Anyway, look at that. Look at that. Look at the action. Look at QT Marshall. He's there. You know, he's got the arm. He's pissed off. If you haven't, uh, haven't been keeping up on the, the seemingly con brewing conflict what? within the Nightmare family, oh. Dust Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall, the natural nightmares, do not seem to be on the same page. Well, that's because they're both egomaniacs. Sorry, I just had to say it, Anthony. Just call it like I see it, my friend. Nice. I know these people a long time. Yep. Yeah, nice back elbow from the captain, Sean Dean. Captain's the man. I love the captain. Anthony not taking the bait, Taz. That's okay. Wait, I'm yeah. a professional. I'm doing my He's job. Professional. I'm professional. Professional. I take pride in what I do. Oh, big clothesline. And Anthony, you do do a great job. Thank you. Not too bad yourself. Thank you. I appreciate that. I like it when people say nice things about me. It's on, a, on the regular. It's just amazing. Speaking of tattoos. You know, Anthony, I don't know if you know, x has, has a big S tattooed on his chest. Watch out. Oh! Somebody's got somebody's to carry your ass, Taz. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Captain Sean Dean building it. Whoa, whoa. Momentum drop kick. QT got caught. QT's got the momentum against him here. Whoa. Ah, maybe not. Maybe not. Good job. Oh! oh! And we've seen a bit of a mean streak lately from QT Marshall. It's the hair. The hair's coming in. He's meaner because he knows he's going to have a beautiful head of hair. Mm -hmm. He's going to run around like just, he's going to have hair like, like Gene no. Simmons in 81. I thought you were going to say it's like that episode of uh, Treehouse of Horror where Homer gets Snake's hair transplanted onto his head and becomes evil. Oh, that's a crack. That's, <laughs> that's hilarious, dude. That was funny. Oh. Elbow. Oh, look at, oh, he just stepped on the face of Sean Dean. Wow. <laughs> He's gonna have hair like Paul Roma in in '92, right? Roma had good I thought you were gonna say Paul Lind. <laughs> QT Marshall, though. What about him? He's, right, I love QT. I do. I, you, I, I you were just saying you hated him. No, I do. I don't like Dustin. Okay, and I don't like Cody at all. I don't like anybody else in the Nightmare Factory. But I gotta say, I, I love Anthony, obviously, and QT. I I do like QT a little bit. I, I do. I do. And I respect the way he's been lately. And I love his intensity. Yeah, he has ratcheted up the aggression. Cover here. Count. This is a good match. This is a really nice match we're watching right now. Damn. Lock it in there. Tight grip. Yeah, that's good. That's strong. Both forearms across the cheekbones. That really will wear you out. And also uh, blocking the vision, inhibiting the vision of Sean Dean. The captain. Oh. QT's gonna have hair like Sean Simpson in 91. 
You said Simpson, right? Did you say Simpson? I, I did not actually I'm mention I'm talking about the Simpsons from Texas. You don't even know what I'm talking about. Learn wrestling, Excalibur. Learn wrestling, not just Lucha Libre. Watch out. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh big drop kick there by the captain, Sean Dean. Taz very tickled with himself because <laughs> thinks I only watch Lucha Libre. Uh, no. Right. Oh, what a shot, a haymaker right there. I'll learn you a thing or two yet, Taz. All right, all right. Your captain, you, Sean Dean, the southpaw. I, listen, I said this before, I really think the man to your right, Anthony Gogo, has been working on QT's punches. He's throwing harder punches, man. Yep. You're up to something with him. I know he you is, are. He's, 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 he's finally putting his hips into the punch. There you bro. go. I knew it was Oops, something. Swing and a miss there. And the captain comes back with the back elbow. Nice job by Sean Dean, yeah. Another clothesline. Irish whip reversed, reversed whoa, whoa. again. Sean Dean sent in the corner, QT. That's a veteran QT, maybe it's one step ahead of Sean Dean, but maybe not. The Bandera sent him up over the top, the kick to the head, courtesy of the captain. Whoa, oh, wow. Great, top man con hero. Man, that was massive. Great height from Sean Dean. It was awesome. Come on, QT, switch on, son, switch on. He's got to, yeah, he's definitely got to stop this flow right now. Look at the Sean Dean, man. And Sean Dean inside the ring, the drop kick to the face. QT hanging onto the top rope for dear life. Come on, QT. Come on. He's a bit rattled, I think. But oh, nice. QT hits Beautiful. a drop kick of his own. 235 pounds coming straight to your face. Informing your feet. Lovely. Feet, feet, feet. QT. Oh, he's going for it. The big diamond cutter. Handed down from DDP. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Diamond Dallas Page bestowing that diamond cutter, but Sean Dean knows that just as well as anybody. The captain goes around the salute. Cap oh, that, sal that salute might have cost him, I gotta tell yep. you. The captain that puts on the brakes. Slowed him down. Kick to the midsection there. Sean Dean coming off the oh, middle rope. Oh, diamond oh. cutter! Got him. Hooks the inside leg, and that is it. The winner of this match. Q.T. Marshall. Well, Q.T. Marshall. Oh, I'm not. I think there was a little bit of, little bit of disrespect on that salute to the captain. Yeah, I'm a little surprised he did that, but I, I, I get it. I, yeah, but there was definitely something there. Anthony, you saw that, right? I mean, uh, I don't think, I think, listen, I think we're just saying, like, Sean, you know, thanks for coming. Like, you did well, Sunshine, but not, no, not, not quite good enough. He's gonna have hair like Peter Frampton from 80. It's oh. gonna happen. We will continue to monitor this situation with QT's hairline and what's going on <laughs> within the Nightmare family. <laughs> Big singles contest coming up as one of Matt Hardy's newest business associates, The Bunny, goes one on one with Jasmine Ulur next on Dark. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, the Bunny. The Bunny, the Butcher, and the Blade, three of Matt Hardy's newest associates. Well, Matt Hardy is just great at recruiting talent, there's no doubt. This big money match got nothing but coin. So, here's the lovely, well, Buddy doesn't have a, that much coin going through the uh, the end of the month. Well, uh, no, Hangman know. Page won his first quarter. From Orlando, race. Florida, Jasmine Allure. I mean, you're such a pessimist. I mean, really, all the time, bro. You got to bury Matt now in his finances. I'm not. I'm not burying. I'm just bringing up facts. Oh boy, Matt Hardy, who's spitting your vodka? <laughs> well, I saw you do it, Taz. That's why I poured <laughs> it out under the table. Big elbow strike there by the Bunny. Ooh. Oh, but Jasmine Allure turning things around. Oh, Allure, she, we've seen her recently. She's got a lot of fire, this young lady, but you got to be careful with Bunny. Oh, drop kick. I think that might have caught Bunny on the shin. A low drop kick and then followed by the drop kick to the chest. Bunny retreating out to the uh, to the apron, but oh, gets, hangs. Good counter. Allure out to dry over that center strand. Yeah, Butcher, I'm sorry, Blade did just shouting instructions, coaching her up. The, the thing about uh, Butcher and Blade is that 
you know, they, they seem to be mercenaries, not really motivated by championships, just more motivated by money. And the promise of the money from Matt Hardy is really, I think, what brought them into the fold. The well, money as well. It attracts, right? It pulls. Money will pull people in. I mean, I'm not driven by money, but some other people are that are announced people here, but I digress. So the thing is, I, I'm not driven like that. I mean, I, you might be. So obviously, Butcher Bunny Blade, there was money there floating, so you know, you get pulled in. Taz, just because I like to gamble with a nine-year-old child does not mean I'm greedy. Jasmine Allure ate the big sliding elbow strike from the bunny. I mean, I have to, I have to say it. You know, Matt Hardy is very smart, very skillful. You know, very skilled for a manager. And I know Matt a lot of years. I'm proud to say he's a friend of mine, and I'm envious of him as, as, as he is as a manager, as a businessman. He's phenomenal. And he moves big numbers on ShopAEW.com. Yes, he does. A Matt Hardy figure, part of the AEW Unrivaled action figure series. One of the most sought-after collectibles on the market. Jasmine Allure, though, big running clothesline drops Bunny. Well, after Eddie Kingston showed his stuff, I think, I think, hey, I think he made a good choice signing with Matt Hardy. Oh, watch out. Oh, oh, huge. Oh, what a shot, man. Holy cow. Huge thrust kick just dropped Jasmine Allure. Bunny is, she's got a, a ton of intensity, just like Butcher, just like Blade. She is. Uh-oh. You know, Law had her moment, and it might have just been done oh, right here. She oh, done. She's out. Bunny sends her down the rabbit hole and picks up the victory. Here is your winner, the Bunny. Well, a very, very impressive performance here tonight from the Bunny, showing that the Butcher and the Blade aren't the only muscle in this unit. Take another look back at this. The thrust kick to the jaw. Drop Jasmine Allure, and then down the rabbit hole. She went for the victory, referee Aubrey Edwards. Counting three, and Bunny picking up the victory. The Nightmare Factory trio of Carly Bravo, Brick Aldridge, and Dean Alexander will take on Colt Cabana, Evil Uno, and Stu Grayson of the Dark Order next here on AEW Dark. This is a six-man tag team match set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a total combined weight of 686 pounds, the team of Carly Bravo, Brick Aldridge, and Dean Alexander. Taz, how come I never see infomercials for the Team Taz Dojo here on AEW Dark? Uh, well, because it's uh, it's just the way things go. Uh, I thought and, they, they buy invitation only, or yeah, no. We listen. We don't team Taz. You know, we do things that we run our dojo. It's just a little bit more hardcore. No open enrollments. No, and it's not. It's not a friendly place to be either. We don't even like each other. So it's that simple. And their opponents being accompanied to the ring by Dark Order at negative one at a total combined weight of 664 pounds. Join Colt Cabana, Order. Evil Uno, and Stu Grayson. Taz, we're gonna put a pin in what you said and return to it later that Team Taz doesn't even like each other because we saw last week on Dynamite, you guys definitely not on the same page. Oh, we'll get into that. Yeah, I mean, well, well, well yeah. I'm trying not to go too deep on that because it, some things are really ticking me off, but right now we see the Dark Order, we see negative one right there, the leader of the Dark Order, the little man himself, the mean little man. Very unique exit. <laughs> it certainly is. Oh, he's gonna stand by. Make sure, make sure these guys are uh, performing as uh, up, up to the standards. Interesting. We don't see uh, QT Marshall or Cody Rhodes pacing on the stage like that during these <laughs> Nightmare Family matches yeah, or Nightmare that, Factory. Pardon. That would be funny. Good advice right there, Cole Cabana just got from you know from Negative One. Cole Cabana's got singlets older than uh, you know, Negative One. Yeah, Cole Cabana, 20 plus year vet, taking. Advice from a nine-year-old. Oh, that heel trip. That's what that's what negative one was saying. Yeah, that's it. Good job. Floating over to the head. Dean Alexander trying to wrestle out of this predicament with Colt Cabana. Cabana, you saw there he tapped Alexander, he diverted his attention, and then immediately seized the wrist. Yeah, well he's seasoned uh, as heck for sure is Cabana. He could get Someone not as uh, experienced, a little bit confused, and that's what just happened right there to Mr. Alexander. He's like a good deck out on somebody's patio. He's well-seasoned. 
I have all paved like in stone. I go with cement and concrete, bro. That's how right. it is, bro. How about, how about like, like a, 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 a nice cast iron pan? He's well seasoned. I like that. Okay, thank you. Oh, uh, I've seen the experience of Kali Bravo. He had a little too cocky right there with a, you know, with an old school veteran right there. You can't do that. You can't play those games. Says that's gotta gotta make you smile seeing Carly Bravo get knocked around. <laughs> I guess all of a sudden I got heat with Carly Bravo. <laughs> got heat with everybody around here, bro. And I don't care, except for Team Taz, well, most of them. Hook it really's got really got it out for you. He, well, yeah, he probably don't like the evil. Big yeah, drops right. to the chest there by Evil Uno. Uno. Vertical suplex there. Hooks the near leg. Just the two count though from referee Frank Gasno. Evil Uno. Smart right there. We talk about it a lot. Just right there. Holding his opponent while he tags in Stu Grayson. Simple stuff, but works. Nice little Russian leg sweep. Bravo brought back up to a seated position there by Evil Uno, and Stu Grayson ran through him with that PK. Grayson, the man with the nickname Born and Bred for Combat, he relishes the uh, you know the back and forth physicality. But right there, Carly Bravo uh -oh. able to big brick now. Be careful here. Sorry, you were saying. Just going to say Carly Bravo able to avoid contact and make the tag out to Brick Aldridge. Well said. Oh, oh wow. That was just got dropped back to the to Cab corner there. Yeah, Cabana. I mean, that actually, Tess, that really underscores the relationship of Dark Order here. They, they have grown together as a family. Cabana doesn't like seeing uh, his, his, his brother in arms taking a cheap shot. Yeah, they definitely have, uh, a, you know, a true love for each other, the Dark Order. All of them. They really do, and I think it's great. Charlie Bravo laying in some right hands and now some right boots to Stu Grayson. Good tag team synergy, synergy here by the Nightmare Factory representatives. Well, you can see why, uh, you know, with the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, what he brings out of the Nightmare Factory people, they are Ooh. very easy not to like, in my professional opinion. And that starts with Cody. Rick Aldridge. Heavy elbow strikes. Well, it's not often you can drop someone like Stu Grayson. That was impressive by Brick. Uh oh, but Grayson meeting Aldridge with the clothesline and. Wow, strong Yoranagi. That the strength of Stu Grayson never ceases to impress. Ooh, great clothesline by Evil Uno. Elbow rocks Bravo, moved to the midsection of Dean Alexander. Neck breaker there. Swing and a miss there by Brick Aldridge. Evil Uno, the high boot. Carly Bravo, though, trying to capitalize. Evil Uno, oh wow, misdirect there, rolls through Bravo, and oh, the stomp on the fingers, and the drop kick to the face. Inventive offense there yeah, by Evil stuff. Uno. Yeah, great stuff, negative one loves it. Evil Uno in complete control right now. Bravo up on the shoulders. Oh, no, buddy. Here we go. Oh, neck breaker on Carly Bravo. And Colt Cabana, the big elbow strike. Two of them. Cabana just dropping people here. And Carly Bravo sent in. Stu Grayson coming off the top with the fatality. The cover and the three count. The winners of this match, Dark Order. Strong victory by the Dark Order, set the tone right there. Look at the negative one, he don't want Bravo in that ring at all. Look at him, put the boots to him. Doing your dirty work, Taz. <laughs> negative one leading. This Dark Order trio to victory here tonight. An impressive performance by B Cabana, yeah. Uno, and Grayson. Dominant. Tip up City right there. Look at him. Good job by negative one.
The Nightmare Families, Nick Camarado and Aaron Solo in tag team action next here on AEW Dark. This is a tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring at a combined weight of 453 pounds, the team of Aaron Solo and Nick Camarado. The Nightmare Factory representatives, Nick Camarado and Aaron Solo, making their tag team debut here tonight on AEW Dark. Their opponents at a combined weight of 368 pounds, a team of Angel Fashion and D3. Guys, who's got the better hair on this team? QT Marshall. Oh, no. Uh, well, actually, that's who QT wants to have his hair like, Camarado. With the better hair, it's obviously, you know, Camarado and Aaron Solo. They, they have beautiful hair. Anthony, who do you like in the hair game? I mean... It's a cosmetic business, Anthony. Yeah, you I gotta, mean, you know, it's part of the game, yeah. Nick Comrosa looks like he's got hair drawn on by a child. <laughs> <laughs> They've got the felt tips out and done some squiggly lines. But he's supposed to be your friend. Yeah. I, I was going to say, actually, I know System Aaron Solo, he, he walked to the ring on, on, on the entrance with a bit more confidence, more swagger, and that's got to do because he's got a 275 pound behemoth behind him, back in the mark. Camarato is a monster. And earlier, second ago, I should say, Solo had a really nice fireman carry there. The D3 showing that athleticism. D3, very well traveled from Rome, Italy. He's been around the block a bit, wrestled many, many years in Europe for uh, yeah. calling oh. America his home. So he's very, very good, D3. Oh! As, uh, as, as Excalibur would say, he's Italian. <laughs> That's what you said a couple weeks ago. Angel Fashion tagged into the match, and he will stand toe to toe with Mr. Freak Beast. Well, Angel, Angel Fresh, Angel, you'll get it free. eventually, Taz. I, I'm, I'm right there. I'm right there on the Angel, precipice. I'm, here it goes. Angel Fashion, you got it there. Is a big cat, but not Ooh. as big as this big cat here, Cop Rock Two. I was going to say the same thing, Taz. I'd have said it a bit, I'd have said it a bit quicker when you said it, but I was going to say <laughs> that I walked past Angel Fashion in the back earlier, and he's a big dude, but compared to Nick Amoroso, he looks relatively small. Yeah, no, I, I think it's that overly uh, massive thickness that Camarado has, and that power is super strong from what I understand in the weight room, too, is Nick, Big Nick. Cool, yeah. Big right hands there from Fashion. Camarado. Oh, wow. His power is never not impressive. And he just planted Angel Fashion with that slam. Tag out to Aaron Solo there. Small by Nick, bringing his opponent into the corner where Solo was. Oh, and Solo. D3, yeah, D3 just ate that. Yeah, he's Angel Fashion. Say Angel Fashion was about to get one too. Angel Fashion. Ooh, Ooh man. That was low. That was a tough toe kick to the that midsection. Was real low. Oh, 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 nice. Solo crisscross the arms behind the back. And wow, picks up the victory. Nice job, Aaron. The winners of this match, Nick Camarado and Aaron Solo. Good job by these two men here. Well, for the first time teaming together, the representatives of the Nightmare Factory. Aaron Solo and Nick Camarado look impressive. Showing that vast offense that Aaron Solo has. Captured, nice cover, I should say, and captured a victory right there for his, him and his teammate. I like this team. You've got the technical nous of, uh, of Solo and the big brute strength for Nick Camarado. Nice, nice effort today, lads. Well done. Nice Not effort. Nightmare Factory, Even one nice and victory. Here we go, Cesar Bononi with pretty Peter Avalon in his corner collides with John Schuyler. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first, How do you keep a turkey in suspense, Taz? I have no idea, but I know this is the love sleigh, or sled, sled, what do you call it? Bing! 
accompanied by pretty Peter Avalon from Sao Paulo, Brazil, weighing 259 pounds, Cesar Bononi. Pretty Peter Avalon coming out uh, on the sensual sled. Bad to the bone right there. Bad to the bone. And his opponent from Columbia, South Carolina, weighing 214 pounds, John Schuyler. You like that central slip? I do. That's great. Rosell Jones. Now you, you just never answered my question. I didn't hear you. Yeah, you did. Justin was talking. What'd you say? No, he wasn't talking. Was Tell me what you said. Tell me, I don't want to play this game. I don't like when people do that. Collar and elbow tie up here. Skyler. Skyler feeling the power of Bononi. Ooh. Cesar swinging a miss. Head to the midsection. Oh, jumping knee, yeah, knee strike. Jump knee. Watch out. Mm. Lowe's line, Cesar. Eat that one for breakfast. And we've seen Taz a, a very odd relationship. I mean, we saw JD Drake and Ryan Nemeth teaming together, and Ryan Nemeth and uh, the pretty picture, Peter Avalon and Cesar Bononi, also some sort of relationship. So we could have a, a quartet of, uh, of oddities there. <laughs> It's like getting hit in the back of the head with a telephone pole. Why would you say oddities? They're all very handsome men. Maybe not JD. But you know what I mean? Like, I'm just saying. I mean, I'm not passing judgment. But, uh, you know, really, I think Cesar is a, oh, a very handsome man from a, Brazil. A quartet of odd fellows. I, I mean, Peter, pretty people, a lot of pretty people. You'll get it eventually, Cesar. It's, it's a lot of peace. Is damn right uh, a pretty man. Big you know hip toss here. Cesar looks the far leg. Didn't get uh, flat on the mat there, Taz. No, he did not. That's why he didn't win the match. You're getting cranky past your bedtime. Me, I'm getting cranky. You over here telling me, you'll get a lot cranker. You get, get the much off faster. You over here ripping me, attacking me, verbally abusing me. It's abusive. Elbow to the Respect midsection. Respect your elders. Ooh. <laughs> Man, Skyler got sent to the outside hard. Got to watch out for Avalon out there. He's got that smoking jacket on and those crazy tights and whatever he's wearing on his feet. Question why he, Avalon did not put the knee pad on the inside. Oh, Jesus. Makes for a very odd match. But I'm not, I'm not his uh, sartorial consultant. Nor do I wish to be. Beautiful Benoni, that's right. Beautiful Benoni, that's a great name, Avalon's. Oh my God, he's a genius, that pretty Peter Avalon. Beautiful Benoni and pretty Peter make White the duo. Beautiful Bononi. God, that's money. I'm going to trademark that. Beautiful Bononi, bad to the bone. <laughs> oh, look at that. Cesar hangs on. Ooh, oh. Skyler able to avoid contact. Waist lock here. Connor Jones, no. Uh oh, oh a little switch. And Skyler. Oh, oh, oh. Big power. Cesar Bononi. A real choke. Oh, oh man! Yes, you about to tap out for that. Well, I was going to say, you hang on to that. You got to tap out. I mean, not only does the the dizziness from being spun around, but from the uh, the loss of blood flow to the brain. Cesar Bononi. Oh, plant Skyler center of the ring and picks up the victory. The winner of this match, Cesar Bononi. Well, beautiful Benoni, bad to the bone. Victorious beer for tonight. Well, that's, uh, you're up high in the air by an athlete the size of beautiful Benoni. Watch here again. Skyler had no choice but to get driven on the back. And Skyler's not a small guy, so for Cesar to just hoist him up with, like, such ease. He's strong. Really underscores the strength that beautiful Benoni brings. You like that alliteration, Taz? Oh, it was great. Thanks, Taz. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us here tonight on AEW Dark. Tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT. It will be AEW Dynamite. We have a great night of action in store for you. So thank you once again for joining us. Good night, everybody.